We're joined right now uh, on the phone line by uh, the man who played Ghost in Power for all those years and now is in the new film Spell in select theaters starting today. Also available at home and premium video on demand digital today, just in time for Halloween weekend. The actor Omari Hardwick here on the program. How are you, Omari? How you doing? I appreciate you having me. I'm super uh, humbled to be here. I'm I'm thrilled to have you here right now. Are you typically in real life a horror movie guy? I mean, do you normally take these <laughs> in, or you just like starring? Um, in them? No, I, I've never typically have been that guy. I mean, you know, having come from sports, as you know, I come from, and maybe there's some horror thriller to being an athlete. Um, it, it comes with its share. But never in the genre of film. I've never necessarily been down with it. I get. I, I mean, I get. I get the whole psychological thriller. Yes. I don't necessarily get down with the blood and gore. But I've watched my share of The Shining, Children of the Corn. That one probably did a disturbing thing to me. And you know, I, I tend to like Hannibal Lecter. I think that Anthony Hopkins really got it in on that one. So yeah, he misery, of course, which this film is being compared to. I've watched that as well. Well, there's a little bit of misery uh, to what's going on in your film as well, right, Omari? I mean, I don't know if you you remember Misery, where uh, James Caan was locked in a house or locked in a room, but it yeah. seemed like there's a little Absolutely. bit of that going on, right? Correct. No, you're right. It's in terms of the handcuffing, in terms of uh, a woman enslaving a man, right, and and sort of um, being able to have her way with this man. It's a little bit like that in that sense, but this is different because, of course, we're diving deep into the historical component of um, hoodoo and voodoo, the differentiation between the two, how the Appalachian area, ironically, specifically around that uh, those Virginia mountains, how there's still communities that get down with that, practitioners, people that work in, uh, in, in kind of like grain and, and ground and mud and blood and skin and, and use all of that to sort of to, to create, I guess, or curate this boogity doll. And so in that regard, it's not what Kathy Bates was doing with Jimmy Kahn. Yes. It's a little different, but absolutely I'm entrapped a lot like James Kahn was in Misery. Yeah, Omari Hardwick starring in Spell, again, just in time for a Halloween weekend here on The Rich Eisen Show. Let's uh, dive a little bit into that sports background. Um, you wound up on the Georgia Bulldogs, correct? Did you not back in the day, yes. Omari? Yes, sir. Yep, you are correct. Okay. You know, what's funny is, you you were at the University of Michigan, is that correct? I was at the University of Michigan uh, from 86 to 90, so before you were in the mid-90s with the Georgia Bulldogs. Yeah. Absolutely. But ironically, I only I only bring that up to say my dream school, actually, Rich, was to play for the Maize and Blue. That was actually my, I always, my whole life, I thought I played for both Shin Beckler and then it trans, transitioned into Gary Moeller. Right. Went to a couple camps, roommated with Terrell Wheatley at one of those camps, and then uh the, the offer from the Big Ten was actually Wisconsin, Northwestern as well, but the offer didn't come from from Michigan, and I ended up at University of Georgia. Well, that's a great place to land, but the fact that you wanted to be wearing the maize and blue just shows you about what a successful, <laughs> smart man that you are, Omari. That, uh, yeah, I love that. Look at you. You know? No, I mean, it just shows you <laughs> that you know class. You have taste. Um, but <laughs> Georgia is a great, by the way, backup plan. Uh, certainly, if you want to play it's not a bad backup. football. So, so um, in the defensive backfield with you was, in fact, the current coach of the Georgia Bulldogs, Kirby Smart. Is that right? There he was. There he was no at the kidding. epicenter of the defensive backfield, um, playing none other than free safety. Uh, strong at times. We both platoon between strong, um, I as a corner to strong safety, and then he as a free safety to, to uh, strong safety. So he was doing it up. Of course, there we had Ray Goff in that transition to Donnan, who had Marshall, had Randy Moss, and then they transitioned into Coach Rick, um, who, of course, Champ Bailey and, and, and the likes, the ending years of, of Robert Edwards and, uh, and of course, Heinz Ward had, had those same coaches as well. So, yeah, Kirby was with me, and now it's nice for all of us to come back and hang out with our fellow alum a little bit. I bet so. I'm sure you're living and dying with Georgia Bulldog football, certainly the last few years. <laughs> I'm sure you are. Absolutely. No, I know. So, Every time I talk to Terrell Davis, that's all he wants to talk about is Georgia Bulldog football. And I'm sure, you know, seeing Todd Gurley balling out for Atlanta right now, as he was last night, is particularly prideful for you to watch. I imagine. Yeah, no, it's a it's a good thing because I'm I'm disappointed in the Falcons in so many ways. I'm I'm really honestly, I've had this conversation recently with uh, Travis Stroud and a, a couple of acting buddies of mine who grew up in Atlanta. Travis Stroud having been a teammate at Georgia, and we've talked about the fact that I don't know, maybe it's a transplant city sort of thing, but 
It just doesn't seem. I brought it up to Deion Sanders as well, and I said to Prime and those other two aforementioned cats that it just seems like Atlanta sports, uh, Georgia Bulldogs included, we just don't seem to get over that hump, Rich. And it, it really it bothers a lot of us, particularly those that are native and not transplants to the city. Um, but I'm proud of all of those guys, like you said, you know, Gurley getting it in, Tony Michelle at New England. That's right. Um, I'm proud of all of those guys that, you know, represent our city and, and the college I came from very well. I know, I know Atlanta lost to the Lions last week, but at least DeAndre Swift walked out with a win in Atlanta, you know. I mean, and it seems like he's yep. getting better and stronger every single week. And Heinz Ward, man, I mean, a Super Bowl MVP. I love that guy. What was it like being a college teammate of his, Amari? Man, it was it was like being next to um you know, when you, you hear that adage, uh, the last shall finish first, Rich, and I'm sure you've heard it, you know, whether being a person that was raised in any kind of religious thoughts or what have you, the adage of the last shall finish first is what it was like being around him. And what I mean by that is sometimes, bro, you look over to the left or to the right of the bench and he was just sitting there because they almost didn't know what to do with him. You know, he's a football player, and it's often not the case that people are drafted as such. He is an absolute player. Um, playmaker, you know, what have you. And so obviously specifically becoming a wide receiver, not, e- not even with literally big hands, but obviously figuratively some of the biggest hands the game's ever seen and goes on to Pittsburgh and shows out in ways that, again, at University of Georgia, sometimes we didn't know what to do with him. And, and we'd look over and you'd be like, why isn't Hines in the game? He'd go into platoon at quarterback on maybe third and four or whatever, and then he'd play receiver. He kind of, they didn't, you know, put him in on the um, – on, on motion as a wing back, but they didn't really know what to do with him all, all the time. And I, I got to be honest, and we often as teammates commented on that in our pride, we deemed in pride when, of course, they figured out exactly what to do with him in uh, the great city of Pittsburgh. It was awesome. And I think he should be our next inductee to the Hall of Fame. Uh, Champ Bailey and I talked about it, and I think he's going to squeeze in, bitch. So, or, or walk in. Uh, you know what? At some point, um, I think he gets in. Um, but the same thing, Amari Hardwick, the actor uh, from Power and now Spell, which is in theaters, select theaters and uh, on demand and digital today on premium video at home uh, right here on the Rich Eisen Show. I, I think the same thing you just mentioned about what to do with him is the same thing that's going to keep right. him from being in the hall sooner rather than later. It's uh, this, you know uh, what I mean? I got you. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like I, in the fact that, OK, we want to compare wide receiver stats you know, Randy Moss just got in and so on and so forth. Right. But if you put right. it all together, like if you want to talk about a football player like him, uh, who else? Somebody like Brian Dawkins. Um, those Definitely are the guys that can Brian play. Dawkins. Like if I want to build a team of football players who you need your head on a swivel because somebody's going to come for you. Um, That's right. Paula is another one, you know, I mean, although he's, Paul, you know, Paul he's Mahler's a first ballot sure. guy, but I'm talking about football players. He is one of them. There's no two totally. ways about it. No two ways about totally. it. Totally. I, w- I would throw, I think you nailed it. I think you nailed it. As, as often, obviously, with your savvy uh, brain within the sport realm, of course, you nailed it, Rich. But also, I would include in that Ed Reed. Oh, you know yeah. I mean? Like Ed Reed from Baltimore. He's in that category, too. Oh, yeah. And I, I do agree. And I, and I guess I hadn't thought about it from that standpoint that perhaps the same things that were his gifts at University of Georgia and that being such a multitudinal cat um, in the football realm, he kind of was just sitting there at times, coaches not knowing what to do with him. That, that equally, that's been his curse as it pertains to post Pittsburgh and the accolades that'll come or not come. I think that's a great assessment. So, well, just one last for you on this. So, Terrell Davis was right before you, and Champ was right after, or did you cross paths with either of these Hall of Famers? I was uh, both of them. Both of them, man. Both of them are not only having been uh, very close to me, not only crossing paths, but having been very, very close to me. They, they both are probably my two closest friends from. Uh, those years, Robert Edwards included, Travis Stroud included, um, but absolutely Terrell and Champ Bailey are probably the ones that I talk to the most. Uh, good people, man, all of them. And then, uh, you know, congrats on being able to transition as well as you have. It's not easy. It's not easy. That's the question so many football players have is what next? And you got thrown into that when you were undrafted and, you know, power, and now you're starring in this movie Spell. I mean, it's it's really great. You're 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 uh, You're successful and you deserve it. I appreciate that, man. It's super humbling. I kind of, kind of looked at it from a standpoint of, um, of knowing very early, Rich, that it was a misnomer and not calling um, an athlete an artist. You know, they often don't get called artists, whether it's the balletic prowess of a basketball player. You know, LeBron to back to Michael over to Kobe, rest in power and rest in peace. 
or if it's just the power, as my wife often says, of to her, the, the biggest and best athlete is a football player. And she says it's not necessarily from a skill standpoint, but often when she's looking at linebackers, the better parts of 260 running a 4-6, you know, 40, hunt, hunt, hawking down a, a running back or hunting down a quarterback, that's a different level of, of artistry. And we're not called that. And so the transition was interesting when people kind of wanted to talk about the two. The amalgamation of which might be just that in, in the actor that you see in me. Maybe whatever you see or whatever colleagues competing for me or against me for a role, maybe they are going against an athlete meets meets this guy that's figured out craft. Try it. Sean Springs back in the day used to ask me about it. Charles Woodson yes. would ask me about it. And there's some, you know, Emmanuel Sanders. He's often tried to pick my brain. Kyrie Irving, who I big brother a lot. He's he's another one from the from the basketball side who's, who said, "Hey man, you think I can really play in this world?" You know, after his time of being a coach yeah. through that movie. I mean, LeBron, so. yeah, uh, we'll he's see. he's It'll got some chops. Kyrie's got some. As Uncle Drew, he's got some chops. There's no doubt about that. And, he, he, he you definitely, know. he definitely has it. You know, obviously Terry Crews oh, being sure. that guy, but the compliment that you that you paid to me, Rich, I, I I don't take it with a grain of salt. I take it. I'm very humble because I don't look like Dwayne Johnson or or Terry Crews. I look <laughs> like the guy next door. And then, you know what I mean? I don't look like those guys. Yeah, there's so always you know, time, oh, Omari. Oh, there's oh, time. Oh, there, there's time. There's weights. There's the weight room. There's still always that. Or you know, t- <laughs> and and Thomas Jones. Thomas Jones is doing it right now too. I love Thomas. He's yep. doing it right now yep. too. Thomas, Thomas. Thomas Jones is doing, and, and then we can't forget, of course, we cannot forget uh, Michael Strahan and all he's transitioned into and, and oh, all man. he's become. Even if it's not from the thespian standpoint, if it's, you know, the true gift of acting, he's definitely showed all those other gifts that God put him. So oh, shout please. Out to him too. And then uh, last one, um, you know, I don't mean to correct you. Uh, you mentioned Prime. It's it's not Prime. It's Coach Prime, um, Omari. Oh, Coach Prime. Coach Prime. Prime. He's, he's Coach, Coach Prime. Prime time now. He's Coach, which Isn't I'm. That awesome? It's great. It's great, and 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 you know who's gonna uh, rue the? And I'll I'll say this, even though I he did, probably wouldn't want me to. Florida State's gonna rue that mistake for the moment. Well, maybe they'll maybe they'll revisit uh, that. You, maybe they'll revisit that. Yeah, at I, some think, point. I think I think so. I think they will revisit. I think it's a good staircase. Um, we actually share, ironically, a manager and uh, Prime and our coach Prime. Sorry about that, Rich Coach Prime. It's all good. Sorry, Prime Time, and uh, and sharing that that um. You're talking about Constance? Kind of Is that who saying, you're talking about? Yeah. Yeah, and Constance said it okay. best. I'm glad you gave her a shout out because she Please. said it one day. Come on now. What you, what you just said, Rich, she was like, "Hey, I got to be honest. They will all figure it out, and even if it's not his alma mater, other schools will try to get their hands on him." But oh, she yeah. stated it being a good staircase and a good trampoline of sorts for him to springboard off of into this coaching world. I think he's going to be excellent. I think obviously he's one of the top ten athletes to ever grace the earth. Um, obviously specifically coming from the world of football, but I think he's got a lot to impart on young kids, not just from a coaching standpoint, but just betterment of them as young men as they go to that next chapter of their life. So I think he's dialing in. And, and, and you forgot somebody. I got to correct you. Okay, here. okay. You forgot to state that in this world that I was able to transition into. Yes. You yourself, brother, is no stranger to movies. You've done like three or four movies, right? Well, you know, Amari, like, hey, I get I get, uh, I get, get the uh, odd residual check for playing uh, TV guy in uh, CSI Miami. Um, you, know, you know, like Mike, if you want to go old school. Um, yeah, you know, sure. I go, I go old school with you. Uh, yep. yeah, you, do, you do your thing. Oh, yeah, yeah. I appreciate it. Yeah, me, 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 and, me, and, it. me and Lil Bow Wow are in the same movie. Um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. I say that with no hint of irony. That's fact. These are facts that cannot That's, be disputed. They, uh, Omari, they are we know, facts, and you try to hide from them, so now the world knows it. <laughs> you can, you can, oh, you can check out Rich Eisen on Spell Part Two, which will come out. I don't know, three years from now. Omari I'm and Rich in. That together. I'm all in. Congrats on go. Spell One. Um, we know a lot of the same people, Omari. Let's make this uh, make this a regular thing. Thanks for the call. Everybody should check out Spell and Select Theaters, available at home on premium video on demand and digital today. Thanks for the call. You take care of yourself. Super humble. Big fan of yours. You take care. Right back at you. That's Omari Hardwick, at Omari Hardwick on Twitter, and at Omari Hardwick Official on Instagram. Hey, you watched all the way to the end. Thanks for that. Watch more right here.